waves of revival now are crashing on the shore. A movement of your spirit like we've never seen before. And every eye will look and see the glory of the coming of the Lord. Tsunamis of revival now are crashing on
with his arms stretched out in love. He's not waiting for you to repent. He's not waiting for you to change your ways. He's not waiting for anything but just you to surrender to him. He's just, he's just here with love. It's not a love that's conditional. It's not a love that, that says, hey, go get your stuff right and then come back and I'll love you. But it's a love right here, right now, in this very moment that overtakes everything that's going on in your world that's not right. And I just hear him saying, my love for you is greater than any love you've ever felt. There's nothing greater than the love of Christ because he doesn't put conditions on his love.
and forth on whether I am supposed to share this corporately, but I think I am because it's just burning in me. But during the very first song, okay, I'm, I'm still stuck on the first one. Okay, so um, the ascension dimension and ascending and being seated. I just want to read this because I think if I just try to shoot off the hip, it's, it's not going to hit the mark. So in worship... <clears throat> During the first song, I'm reminded of this question. What is the ascension dimension? The finished work of Jesus didn't and doesn't stop at the resurrection. The finished work stops with his ascension. Until he was seated, he wasn't finished. So the seating of him in heavenly, in heavenly places was the consummation of our redemption. That sounds really confusing, but it's the fullness of everything we've been saved from and into, okay, um, the consummation of that. To every revelation, there is a dimension. To every revelation, there is a length, there's a width, there's a height, and there's a depth. And to each one of those, there's dif- those are different layers of the same truth. And I'll just keep going. Paul says, we have to get a revelation of what happened to Yeshua when he was raised from the dead. That's the reason Paul says in Galatians 1 that because he wasn't the only one that was raised from the dead. We, that requires revelation. That requires the Spirit of God revealing that to each one of us that when Christ was raised from the dead, we were raised from the dead too. And we weren't just like, we, we think that revelation is like it's not like Lazarus, and it's not like Jairus' daughter, and it's not like the widow of Zarephath's son. That was a physical resurrection, but they were raised, and they still had a dead spirit. This is being raised physically, yes, but being spiritually raised from the dead so that we can be seated in a new realm right now where we can be alive in both places and we can bring heaven on earth, which is what this church is all about. And this church might not feel comfortable or normal, but one of the reasons it's unique is because it's all about this ascension dimension and understanding that God gave us, Jesus, Yeshua gave us access to stand in heaven while we're standing on this earth. And we can be the agents and the portals and the gateways that bring heaven here. We do not have to wait until we die. Death is not your savior. Death is not the answer. Death, you do not have to wait for the kingdom after you die. You get to have it now. And we we live below that. We live so far underneath that bar and yet God is saying You haven't had enough revelation yet of what happened on the cross, what happened when I came out of the tomb. You came with me. I don't understand that. Like time in and of itself, we think very linearly, but it's not like that. We were there when you received the Lord and you take in his, all that he gives you, all that he brings into your spirit when the Holy Spirit comes to live in you you are now of another realm you are now in two places at one time at all times in fact there may be more than that but I know there's at least two places you're in and so to sit in heavenly places that's not anything to take lightly and we may not look like we're really excited but we really need to get excited Because this is going to be the answer. We are the answer. We know that. He's the answer. We're just here with hands and feet and a mouth and whatever. But he's really coming. And he's really got the power. And he's going to be really demonstrating signs and wonders in each one of us. That we won't even recognize each other. I'm telling you, I look a lot better up there than I do down here. And this is the worst I'm ever going to look, I promise you. And this is the worst you're ever going to look because it's just going to get better and better and more beautiful and more powerful. And each one of us just has to put on the mind of Christ and not be conformed to the past.
pattern of this world, but truly believe He has everything you need and more than you need, more than you can even handle, more than you can handle. So I just encourage each one of us to realize who we are. God, help us realize who we are together, corporately, not just me. All of us together. Help us. Anointing. I'm just shaking under something. I don't know. But Lord, I just ask right now that the power of the Holy Spirit come upon each one of us in the fullness of the gifts that you have given us. They're ours. And give us a sense of release to move into realms that we can't understand or know or see, but are real, more real than what is seen in Jesus' name.
Father, you are a multidimensional God, and we are your multidimensional people. So, Father, we thank you for we thank you for your death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. Lord, as it says in Colossians, Galatians, Ephesians, as it as, as we are ran down that road of your your death is our death and your burial is our burial God and and your resurrection is our resurrection but God also your ascension is our ascension that we get seated in the dimension in you in you positionally in you father co-seated co-seated with Jesus co-seated with Jesus according to the word of the Lord Lord, I thank you, God, for a multidimensional people. Lord, help us to break out of spiritual anemia, that we operate anemically compared to what that you've called us to. So, Father, I thank you, God, for another degree increased in our life today. I thank you for another degree increased in our life today God that we are operating one degree more than we were when we came in God that 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 we get one degree closer one degree more near God that we that we hear you even more that we see you even greater God Lord you're not any greater than you've ever been there's nothing that we can say or do today that would cause you to be any greater than you've ever been But Lord, as David decreed, oh, magnify the Lord with me. So Lord, let us just, there be a shift within the spectacles, within the microscope, God. Let there be a shift within the lens by which we view you, that we see you bigger than we've ever seen you. God, you are the same that you've always been, but God, our perspective of you can shift by one degree, and it will turn rudders in our life, and it'll produce fruit in future generations because of decisions that were made in our generation that said that said we're not going to live life religiously, but we're going to live life through sonship, and we're going to speak the language of son, and we're going to decree on things that are not as though they are, that we are going to follow in your steps, walking, God, in lockstep with you, yoked with the Father of heaven, yoked with the Son of God, walking by his Spirit. God, I thank you that there's not a person in this room that inherited a junior version of the Spirit that raised you from the dead, but we got the whole thing. We got the whole thing. So, Father, I don't want to walk with a junior walk, and I don't want to talk with a junior talk, but with the same blank check that Jesus walked the earth with, God, Lord, it has been written to us, God, and we have that authority, God, of heaven and earth that was given to you. You will be in us as we are fully in you and you are fully in us, God, that we can operate differently than we've ever seen than we've ever seen in our generation. We read about it in yours, Father. We read about it in yours, Jesus. Let us operate differently than we ever have. God, I thank you for them just coming into the process of what they are becoming. And today's another step closer. Today's another step closer. God, there's no, there's, no, there's no progressive sanctification, but we got it all. There's no progressive righteousness, but we got the same. There's no progression of, of your spirit. We either got it or we don't. We either got your righteousness or we didn't get any of it. So since we got it all, Lord, now we mature and we walk through the process of maturation just like my, my, my children don't get keys to things that'll kill them. So, Father, you, you cut us off sometimes from things that would harm us. 
But as we mature in revelation, you release the inheritance of keys. But we don't, we don't, you God, you're not waiting on us to be a better version of what we are today. You chose us in this version. Nobody, nobody has to be, well, I can't wait until I'm more anointed like God saw me. No, 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 no. You're just as anointed. You're anointed now. You're anointed now. Father, let us mature in the revelation of what's already on us, of who we already are. No more striving to become better sons. We are your sons now. We are your sons now, enfolded into the, into the identity of who you are and who you've called us to be. Father, you're gonna, there's just an increasing revelation wave, a wave of increasing revelation in the earth where people are not going to be so stuck on telling people what they believe, but they're going to show them who they've become. Father, just release that in us. Let that run so wild in my heart. Let it run wild in us, Father. I give you glory for it. I give you glory for it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. God is so cool. Thank you, worship team. Awesome. Welcome to Kingdom Culture. We're glad you're here. If you're in a posture of prayer, whatever, just remain. That's fine. I don't care if they dared pray for the whole service. They don't have to stay there and pray the whole service. They're not obligated to do that now because I said that. Hey, I want to prophesy to a couple things that I was seeing in the room by way of the Spirit. Um, in, in, in the atmosphere of worship, I saw, um, I saw the Lord was, was doing this. And um, the... I saw like an arrow. Are you hanging with me? Yeah. Do you need a short bathroom break? Yeah. You're good. Okay. Good. Yeah, you need to. Or 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 uh, uh, Corey can come back on the guitar. It doesn't matter. Or like a looper or whatever. Or don't have a looper. Never mind. You're staying. You're staying. Roll with me. Flow with me. All right. Um. Coffee? Yeah. Starbucks are out there. Okay. <laughs> Haley's on it right there. She's on it. <clears throat> um, this is what something I was seeing in, in, in the worship, and um, I, saw, I saw an arrow shot in another environment, and it quickly fizzled. It did not do what you intended it to do when it left the bow. And I heard the father say, shoot it again. And you're like, I already tried this and it didn't work. And I heard the father say, shoot it again. And you shot and it hit and it was hitting bullseye because he said the environment has changed. And because you shifted in the environment, the thing that did not work previously will now work. And then I saw you sowing a seed and said that thing didn't grow before. And now I see the seed that was dormant coming to life. I saw the father and he took the, the, the shore, the, he went on the shore and the disciples had fished all night long and they did not catch anything. And he showed up and he said, he said, have you caught any fish? They said, nothing. He said, cast the net again on the other, they've caught on, on the on the other side of the boat. And they pulled in a great 153 fish that they begin to pull in. The nets, they were pulling in, they were pulling in the nets with large quantities of fish. So the thing that had not worked, the environment shifted when the when Jesus spoke a word, it changed everything. 
And I just want to prophesy over somebody, the thing that did not work in a previous environment, don't give up on something. If the Father's unctioning you to do it again and strike the ground again, this time go with the expectation that the environment has changed and there is going to be a difference that happens now. You're about to hit bullseyes that had previously evaded you. Bullseyes that had previously evaded you. The fish that you couldn't find, the Father is speaking again, and you're about to find harvest, and you're about to find abundance because the environment has now responded to the voice of the Father, and you have shifted with the environment. I just see the, the arrow that fizzled and did not do what it, it was. You shot, and it was avoided. It was a blank. It was voided. And the father is saying, shoot it again. The environment's changed and it's going to produce a different result. So I'm just, I just released that over somebody. Father, I thank you, God, for doing that. God, it's probably for multiple people in the room, and that's okay, God. And, and sometimes we, we call people out specifically, and sometimes, Lord, we just speak because there's, there's, there's a multiplicity of things that are happening in the room. So, Father, I just decree this word over some, God. And, uh, Lord, I specifically know maybe some that it was for, and, and Lord, but you know who it's all for. And, and Lord, I thank you, God, for, for for just doing this and um, and bringing somebody the encouragement, God, that that this thing is going to it's going to sound different, it's going to look different, and their expectation is about to increase to another degree that they've not seen before because they've not been because they've not been the environment has shifted and something has distinctly changed and things that might not have worked before are about to work now not because they got better at it but because their ear was hearing the Father and what he was doing, and it was creating a, a, a ripening in the environment, saying the time is now. So, Father, I thank you for doing that and what all that means for who all it means. And I just give you glory for it. Amen. Amen. All right. I want to, I need to release several things and I'm probably not going to, it's really early actually, it's only 1130 and so um, I'll try not to preach for two hours, but if provoked I could and I don't think I would get finished even if I did that, um, but 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 we're here. Hey, hey, Kenzie, can you give me just a little more, uh, a little more umph in that right there for me? Um I'm on 25. If you you found it, I hear it already. Thanks, man. <clears throat> There's where do I start? Holy Spirit, help us. Um, when when uh, Miss Angel Hallow were here, you heard straight from an angel today, and when she began to release that word and so many things there about the dimensions, the house service started with the dimensions and uh, I, I didn't I didn't get to hear Charlotte's prayer as she opened, but I, I have a feeling that it's something she said was right in the, the, the tying of all this together. Why? Because that's that it happens that way all the time. Because it happens that way all the time. And um, when she was, when Angel was speaking and, and she started to not, to the, the renewing of your mind, to not be conformed to the patterns of this world. And that word, and it depends on which translation that you read that says pattern. Some of them says, do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, depending on what translation you're, 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 you're reading. And But there's some that distinctly say, be not conformed to the patterns of this world. Why? Because the world has patterns. And the problem in a lot of things that are happening in our life is in the pattern that we subscribe to. Can I say it like that? The problem in, is in the pattern that you've subscribed to and that you've partnered with that is always going to produce that specific result, okay? I, I prefer, um, it depending on, so let, let's do it this way. In 
and I'm going to get back to that. It's Romans 12 too, by the way. Okay. I got two bars. That just to encourage you that there, there's two out of three bars that I'll have to quit when that stops. Um, there's, there's some things that, that I, I've, I just feel the Father stirring some distinct things even nationally um, in me of some things that I see. I just see him just flipping the script of things that the enemy was planning and, and we're going to see some plans that get so exposed and some people that are going to hang on the gallows that they built. And I, I, I'm, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing some things. And, and so I, I want to... I want to break some patterns. I want some patterns to be broken off of you because... Dogs return to their vomit. The problem is when you think like you've always thought, you will always do what you've always done to get that result. And I know I just gave that word of, hey, do that. It's the obedience of the word. You didn't catch fish all night long, but now I'm telling you to release the net again. Release the net again, and they pulled in a great number of fish. So what is the Father speaking to you and going with that? So as we've been in this, especially this year, this word of just hear and obey, that is your job, is hear and obey. You are all ministers. You are all equipped to minister. There's no, listen, Listen, let's break this off of our mind that some of you are working for the world and some of you are working for the Lord. There is no working for the world once you become a believer. There is only working for the Lord. In all you do, do it as unto the Lord. Now, you all have different titles. Some of you may be called whatever. Some of you are called other things that you don't hear. And, um, and you, you get called all kinds of things and you have all kinds of titles. But the Father calls you sons and daughters. And that is what you operate from is the position of sons and daughters. So don't get hung up on one day I'm gonna be in full-time occupational ministry as somebody that's been in what we call full-time occupational ministry, I thank God that he birthed in our hearts and done things that we launched businesses. And we, I thank God for the revelation that ministry and marketplace, kingdom and marketplace are not two separate things. They go in together. They walk hand in hand. The marketplace is part of the kingdom. And, 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 and we're coming into a moment where gone are the days of people saying, oh, I want to be in full-time. Listen, you are getting paid in full-time occupational ministry right now. I don't know who your employer is, but they're paying you to be a minister. You are getting paid to minister. Why? Because tomorrow somebody's going to walk into your life that is needing a right now rhema word from heaven and you are the mobile tabernacle of heaven on earth saying that I am the vehicle of God's presence to release this right now thing into your life. What is your job? Hear and obey. You are all ministers. You are all ministers. He called us all, didn't we hear that recently? A hundred percent of us he called ministers. Now some he called prophets and some he called pastors and some he called apostles and some teachers and some evangelists, but all are called ministers. Come on. You're all ministers. Of what? The gospel. Well, I don't, I don't have a microphone. It's not about you having a microphone. What, what stage has he put in your life? You're the announcement of that stage of the good news. What is the gospel? The gospel is, is, uh, is, it means good news. The Greek word for gospel means good news. So what is the good news? There's nothing good except for God. What is that? Mark chapter, Mark chapter 10, I believe. Why do you call me good and why do you not call me? Why do you call me good? There's none good except God alone. 
So if God is good, every good and perfect thing comes from above. Are you with me? So every good and perfect thing comes from above. He will work all things out for the good of them that love him and are called according to his purpose. So if it's good, if it's truly good, then it must be truly God. And if it is good, then it came from God. And if it's not good, then that means God's not done yet because anything he gets done with, it is good. That's why after day one, he looked and said, it is good. He looked and he celebrated things and said, it is good. Why? Because he finished something, and when he finished something, then the end result is that is goodness. So if it's not good, then God's not done because he can't be done with something that's not good yet. I need, you, I need you to track this. I need you to track this. But if it is good, then it came from him because everything good comes from him. Everything good comes from him. So what is the good news? It is the story of what God is doing in your life. That is your authorized testimony. We overcome how? We overcome not, not we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Isn't that interesting that you thought you overcame by fasting and prayer, but you don't overcome by fasting and prayer? I'm not telling you to quit fasting and praying. I'm not I'm telling you, I'm telling you to get an even greater revelation of how we overcome. It's by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. The word testimony means spirit of prophecy. So when I begin to release the good news, and that's why I said tomorrow somebody needs a rhema word that's going to walk into your life. That's why you are carrying a rhema word, a right now word from heaven. When you begin to release the good news that God has done in your life, you're releasing the spirit of prophecy into their atmosphere, which means to do it again. That's why we need to bind up the testimonies, according to Habakkuk. Bind up the testimonies. Release them. That's why they they set up 12 stones when they would cross the water. And they said, tell the future generations when they look at these stones of what God did. Why? Because there's nothing that you could face when you have the testimony. All I need is a memory of what God is doing in my yesteryear and what he did in a grandfather, in a great-grandfather, what he did in a nation, what he did in a people. All I need is some stones and the remembrance of the stones that were left and say that this is something that God has done before and I receive it and partner with it and he will do it again. And so when you tell people of what God's doing in your life, hey, I need God to do something in my life and they hear that and their faith ignites and they begin to partner with something. That's why when you when people begin to tell the stories of how they got healed, it ripens the atmosphere for somebody else to get healed. Have you ever heard those type of stories? When somebody was giving the testimony of their healing and somebody in that same service got healed? Why? Because there was a releasing of the spirit of prophecy to do it again. That's why we t- tell you, text us when you, get, when you get a breakthrough, healing, financial, whatever that it is. That's why we want to hear these stories. There will be, I prophesy to you now, there will be future services at Kingdom Culture where I don't preach like this because we had to line up the people to release the testimonies of what had happened in just the past seven days. And they begin to, they, we, we come here as the equipping ground. What is this? What, what, are, what are these gifts? They're, for the, what, what, they're apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers and evangelists. What is that for? It's for the edifying of the body and the equipping of the saints, not the heathen. Oh, crap. Come on, man. We got to get this one now. Why is it a big deal? Because, because we don't need, listen, God never told us to go get decisions. He said, go get disciples. 
and, we, and we're trying to get people to come in so that they can sign a card and check a box and say that I'm a believer now. That is the entry gate to it all. In fact, in fact, I know as blasphemous and upside down as it might seem for the Western American church because we have built our churches on we need the lost people to come in and get saved. That's because you sucked at discipleship for so long that you couldn't equip anybody to release a believer into the street. Let's not let ourselves off the hook. So how many, so how many, oh man. So, so how many, so how many people do we need to see come? Now listen, if somebody comes next week and they want to get saved, I'm not telling them no. But this is the barn. This is the storehouse. This is the launching ground for you to come into an environment and get equipped so that you're launched into the harvest field. This is not the harvest field. The harvest field is everywhere you go outside of this. Everywhere you put your foot down is a place that's being delivered into your hand. And when you get equipped, you will become a walking, breathing epistle. You will become the good news. You will begin to release, you'll begin to release 316 of your name saying this is what God has done in my life and this is what he'll do in yours and they'll become believers and they won't have to kneel down at a gas pump and repeat a prayer after you they will see the son that you've become and it will ignite faith on the inside of them and the atmosphere of their world man I, it's like I want to, listen, I want to see lost people come. I want you to be so equipped that you become walking revivalists to see lost people transformed by the glory of God. That's that's how Jesus designed it. I'm sorry for what religion in the American church has given you, but that's how it was designed to say this is the equipping ground. This is the equipping ground. So what could be the greatest testimony that, that, that the American church ever has? That they stop, be, they stop seeing people saved inside the church, but they equipped their people and they started seeing mass revival in the streets. Mass revival. Where people were being saved and healed and delivered and set free. Or, or we can just, if you don't like that, we, we can tell you the story of how you guys all need to get the lost people to come here so that they can hear my message and they can see my face on the screen and we can build my ministry of how many people came to Christ under Josh Caldwell and Ministries International of the you know Episcopal Bishops. And, 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 we, and we can see this or we can all step into the authorization that we are ministers and sons and daughters. That my testimony is my microphone. And you just walked in the sound of my voice. You just stepped into my atmosphere. And the greater you let this revelation come, the more of an epicenter you become to send a ripple effect into whatever atmospheres that you walk into. That's why we have historical men of God that walked into, that's why Charles Finney walked into the factory and he did not preach, even though he was a preacher, but he walked into the factory. Grown men shut the machines down and fell on the floor in, in prayer and in repentance and he didn't say a word, he just walked into the building. That, this actually happened. Did you know did you know that there was a president named Abraham Lincoln that would shut down the cities of Seattle and Denver and he would shut down the cities across America at noon at lunchtime they were shut down for prayer preparing people to go into the civil war the government you know when when righteous people were there and not stupid people when righteous people were there I don't, I don't know, I make no apologies for that. When, 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 when people that were trying to, now listen, let me help you with this. You don't, you're not always gonna get it right, but where's your heart even when you get it wrong? Can I help you with that? Where's your heart even, it's like, oh, I don't know what God's calling, I, I don't wanna miss God. Listen, stop thinking that way. You're not gonna miss him. 
I can't swing and miss. Well, Josh, no, you you swung. No, how do you, how do you, I, I, no, stop thinking that way. You're not going to swing and miss. Well, I, and I say, that I've said this 10 times. I'll say it to you 10 times more. I always like to use this example because it's appropriate. Jonah, you remember him? You had a nursery wall, didn't you? Jonah, God said, go here. He said, I don't think I want to do that. And he goes somewhere else. He was hearing God and trying to not do, did not want to do what God said. And the scripture, if you go read it, he went like, he went down like five times. It says he went down, down here, down, down to, he went down to Joppa, down into the ship. They throw him overboard. He goes down into the sea. A whale comes and he goes down into the whale. But then it says he repented. He changed the way he thought about what God was assigning him. I guess you obviously would at that point. And then it said he came up. It's like, it mentions like down like five times, but the first time it mentions up is when Jonah changes his mind. And then he gets vomited up. And, and if, you, if you even like to believe the maps in the back of, the back of your Bible, you, and, and, the, and the, the course that he, the, to Nineveh, you will discover that Jonah actually arrived in Nineveh faster than he would have by way of the whale. He arrived faster than if he would have just started walking there when God said go. Isn't that amazing? Guess what? Jonah was trying to miss God. Jesus shows up hundreds of years later and he says this, as Jonah was three days in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be three days in the heart of the earth. Isn't that the guy that was trying to do what God said? He was not like, I ain't having it. I ain't doing that. If Jonah, who was trying to not do what God said to do, became a type and shadow of Christ, how much more so will you, trying to do what God has told you to do, not miss it. You can't miss it. Because even if you do, there was, st- see, there was still a love for God in Jonah. Now, he hated what he heard from God, but it didn't change the fact there was still a love for God inside of Jonah. Inside of Jonah, and God and God rescued him. My point is this: if your heart is in the right place, how much more so are you not going to miss this? So stop sitting on the sideline, wondering, "Am I going to make this? Am I going to miss this?" You're not going to swing and miss like Josh. I just swung and missed yesterday, but then you're going to discover you're going to discover that the failure, the thing you called failure yesterday, is what opened up the door for success today. Oh, I have not got to any of these things yet that I was wanting to tell you. I started with this, Romans 12, 2. The problem is in the pattern. I like numbers. I like numbers a lot. All right? Like them a lot. The uh, Why? Because mathematics is exact. No matter what people on YouTube are telling you now, Mathematics are two plus two is four. It's absolute. It's four. Okay? I like mathematics. There's just this this beautiful consistency with math. English language, not so much. You know, why? Why? It, it, it baffles me. I don't look, I don't know who was designing silent letters, but it's just like, I don't know. They're, they're, prob- they, they're probably in hell. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, like, <laughs> like for real, knife. I don't know. Let's throw a K in there. I don't mess them up. Like there, it, to my knowledge, there's not a word that is N-I-F-E. Why, that would have been that would have sufficed. No, let's put a K. Put a K in there. That'll, that'll mess them up. 
Well, because because you're trying to do this, there's a lot of languages that aren't as near as complicated as the English language, and 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 the the consistency of it. Because we do, you know, just like it. it that's why it, it mess it, it makes it infuriates me. It infuriates me because home is H O M E and comb is not C O M E, and that makes me mad. Because comb is C O M B, and that's stupid. If, if come is C-O-M-E, then home should be H-O-M-E, but that wouldn't make sense. So it should be, it should be home and comb, C-O-M-E. I, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. We could, we could have done some things differently and they just, it's, it's a silent letter. Don't worry about it. I, like, I, I'm just gonna start putting silent numbers in people's names and stuff. I, just, I thought about it with my kids. I'm just gonna put like the, say, you know, how do you spell Kason? C seven A S O N. Don't worry about that seven. It's silent. It makes just as much sense. Make, you, you don't pronounce the seven. It's silent. Well, why is it there? But two plus two is always four, and I like that. I like that because with it, like all these hard rules, you know, I before E. Oh, okay, I got that. Oh, wait, wait, except after C. Or as in neighbor and way. Neither one of those have C's in them, but you flip it around so you don't know what you're talking about. Whatever. All right, I got I to quit. I got to quit that. I got to run, moving right along. Two plus two equals four, and sometimes you're, you're in a pattern of, I'm going to get two and and two and two and, the, and 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 four and then and six and then and then and you get and you get this thing and 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 you're just constantly adding you know you're constantly in this pattern of producing something and 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 some people are like well I'm in a pattern of you know it's like well and, and and people do this we we do we think like this listen there's nothing new under the sun they say history repeats itself History repeats itself. There's nothing new under the sun. Why? Because there's a pattern in the, so long as the earth remains. Seed, time, harvest, so long as it remains. Why? Because there's a pattern to this thing. There's a pattern. There is a pattern. And, and, and so we see this. We see this in nations. Rise and falls, ebbs and flows. We see this in economies. We see it in economies. If you can, if you will, if you will, and uh, uh, let me help you. Let me help you. If you if you want to want to make some money, start watching the stock market. Okay, now, I'm not telling you to watch them all. I'm telling you to pick one out. Pick one out and start reviewing it for the last for the, from its from its genesis. Start reviewing it from its genesis and then watching how how it does. And then after that thing stabilizes, okay, take Apple. Apple, for example, okay. Black apple. Maybe you don't like them apples, um, but I like apple. Which largest largest tech thing? You know, billions, multi over hundred billion dollars. You can you can find their analysis of things online. They have more cash on hand than they have debt. That's always a good sign for a company. Always a good sign. They have cash overseas that they're they don't move it here for tax purposes and but they 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 do things they do things and there's a pattern to stuff okay now i'm not to go back to the 90s and look at apple and you'll kick yourself because you could have bought it for less than eight dollars a share would have been a good thing just saying would have been good all right so it's hard to see that pattern but after it stabilized and the iphone came out in 2006 and changed the world and 50% of their sales comes off new iPhones. Lord bless them. And, and, and so they sell all these things and you can pick this and you can watch the ebbs and flows of history of something and see that this goes up and down. I can, yeah, it happens this way. They release things in certain quarters of the year. When do the new iPhones come out? They come out in like September. October, every year. I wonder why. Well, because Christmas happens every year in quarter four. Black Friday happens. 
all the what this is generating things so i'm just saying you can start identifying patterns of things and when you identify the pattern you can say hey this happened here once it stabilizes to a specific spot i'm by no means i'm not i'm not telling you that you can come and get be a financial advisor with with me that's not what i'm talking about i'm saying you can identify the patterns or and i analyze them and i watched it and i analyzed it and i watched it it does this thing then I started figuring out that I can put money in right here and they pay me a lot more when I send it out of there because there's a pattern to things and you can identify the pattern in currencies, in all kinds of stuff. You can identify the pattern in nations. You can identify the pattern. What is the deal? The problem a lot of times is in the patterns and you're not supposed to conform to the patterns. Let me help you. If you add up certain numbers, you'll keep getting, you know, you'll just keep getting sixes. You'll keep getting, you know, are you with me right now? You're like, well, I'm just going to add this up, add this up, and I'm just going to keep doing this, and I'm going to keep seeing this. I'm going to keep giving fives. I'm going to keep getting sixes. I'm going to keep getting sevens. I'm going to keep giving I'm, I'm just going to, because there, there's, there's the pattern of things that will constantly produce something. It will constantly produce this particular thing. The sum of what you're doing and the multiplication of what you're doing is, is here. And, and numbers are beautiful because they have meaning. They have life. They have meaning. Okay? And, and to, by the way, stop giving them to the enemy. God created the number six, not the devil. I bless you with that. Man... If you, I had a dream about it one time. I was telling people in my dream, I said, if you knew the secrets of six, it would unlock, it would unlock mysteries from the foundation of the world. I was telling that in my dream. Knew the secrets of six. Because six is the four corners of the earth, the up and down, the number of man. It's a multidimensional number. I haven't found a six in, in, in Jacob's stairway here yet, but I'm convinced there's probably one in there somewhere. Six... Because a lot, why are, why are people thinking the six is devil? Because six 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 is is the, is a mark of the beast, and so it's the devil's number. The problem is just in the pattern, and so many people are stuck on a six six six. They're missing the blessing of six, because God did not create rainbows to be pride months. He created them to be promises. He did not create six and say, "Here, you can have this one, devil." And I know some of you are convinced that he created California for the devil, but maybe he did not. He didn't create California and say, hey, you can have this one. I'm not willing that any should perish, but all have everlasting life. I'll leave the 99 to go and find the one. Come on, man. He's jealous for that. He's going after that. So while the problem is in the pattern, if you'll change how you think, you'll see a different pattern that will arise and you'll say, hey, I can partner with this because there's a problem in the pattern where I'm always, I'm always coming up in this pattern and I'm always on the merry-go-round of the pattern because the pattern will always produce what the pattern has always produced. And the problem is in the pattern. The problem is in the pattern. But if you just change one of the numbers in the pattern, you can come out and say, well, I got, I, instead of this one, I got to this one. I can, instead of this, I got to grace. Instead of this, I got to new beginnings. I got to completion. I got to government. I got, I got to establish new beginnings. And I got to ascending numbers and descending numbers. And I got into the 88s and the 44s and the 24s and the 2s that are the witness of everything. And, and, and I got into all these numbers that have life and they have, they have all of these things and I don't have have time to, to do an entire life on numbers and, and, and they're, they're unending but the pattern of them if you just change one of the numbers then it changes everything of the pattern and now you're thinking differently than you've ever thought now let me give it to you like this your life a lot of times can feel like a merry-go-round until you change the pattern I want you to see it Jesus shows up and says these words. Actually, John the Baptist shows up with one sermon, and it's this one. 
Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What did we, Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed, how? By the renewing of your mind. By the renewing of your mind. So repent, which is, which, review for you repent is is it means it means metanoia is the greek word for it which means change thinking when you get over even into the when it's talking about metanoia in in the revelation of jesus christ when it's talking about metanoia it means to take another mind to take another mind Okay, so repentance, and I know the Old Testament, the Old Testament Hebrew word of repentance is to turn. So there is a turning in repentance, but then there's a greater, there's a greater revelation of repentance than turning from what your your actions are, and it's the changing of your thinking. Why is it a big deal? Because dogs always go back to their vomit. Life can feel like a merry-go-round because there's a problem in the pattern that you're living, and you are circling the same mountain over and over over as Israel did. They're circling the same mountain because there was a problem in the pattern, but the pattern was in their mind. And when they shifted the thinking in their mind, they begin to see the territory that God had really wanted them to be in. So I have to shift something in my mind. I have to take another mind. The one whose ways are higher than mine, whose thoughts are higher than mine, who is Yahweh, and Jesus is saying, take on the mind of Christ. It is part of your armor to put on the, the, helmet, of, to, to, to helmet of salvation. You're, you're doing all this stuff. And, and he's, put on the mind of Christ. Why? Because you will begin to see, talk, and think differently than you've ever seen, talked, or thought. Don't be conformed to the patterns of, of the world, but be transformed through the renewing of your mind. John the Baptist, repent, the kingdom is at hand, at hand. Hand is a symbol of power, okay? But it's also saying that the power of the kingdom is within your reach if you'll change the way you think. If you'll break the confer, if you'll break the conformity of the pattern of the world off of your thinking and take another mind, the invisible realm will become more real to you than you ever imagined. John, John said, everything that you can see was made by what you do not see. So what you do not see is actually more real than everything you can see. But the only way that you'll ever access the power of what you cannot see is to change the pattern of how you think. Don't be conformed to the pattern of the world, but be renewed in mind that will bring transformation to access the invisible realm. Are you tracking with me? All right. I got one person tracking with me. That's enough. Two or two, two or three right here. In agreement. I'm about to put 10,000 things to flight. Here we go. I'm going to hurry. I might be joking about that, but I'm going to try to. I want to, I want to, I want to show you, I want to tie a couple things together here and show you some things. No more working for the world or working for the Lord. You're a minister and you're all getting paid to work for the Lord. Some of your bosses or people that are paying you might not even be righteous. You see, money has no personality. Did you know that? Maybe you didn't. Because you might have grown up in some kind of religious system where they only knew this scripture. Uh, You know, you know, money, money's the root of all evil. And they didn't even give you the whole thing that says the love of money is the root of all evil. And they for sure didn't tell you about Ecclesiastes that said this, money answers everything. They told you Jesus was homeless and poor, some kind of bum, which is such a lie. They brought, they brought treasure chests the size of coffins, wise people. There were more than three of them, by the way. I'm, I'm, I'm going to completely butcher the, you know, the Christmas story from your mind. There were more than three wise men. There were probably at least 12. And they learned how to study the stars through the descendants of Daniel, 
who, who, who was over the Magi that knew how to, and, and it's, it's not, it's, you know, it's not astrology reading horoscopes, it's astronomy because God's making big announcements in the heavens and, 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 yes, and still is. If, if you, there's, there's people now living in the earth that can decipher the Hebrew Maseroth and they can tell you about future events, not because they know horoscopes, because the Spirit of the Lord has gifted them to read the skies. Man, I just like, some of us like, no, it's too much for me. I had, I had some of you until that point. Until that point, nope, it's too much for me. Well, listen, listen. You go to go to the state fairs anywhere you want. Somebody's going. To, they're going to do like palm readings, and they're going to do they're going to do tarot cards and stuff like that. Let me help you. Let me help you. There are really people that can read things about your life from a descended perspective. They have an anointing and a gift on them. Why? Because God's gifts are what they're without repentance, meaning that God will not change His mind about what He put on your life. You show me somebody that's truly, that's truly, I don't, they might be in witchcraft and they may be telling things, but if they're accurate, they're probably really just a prophet on the run because there's a gift of prophecy on them. I, I, know, I know true prophets. I know, I know somebody that's truly a prophet. When he was a kid, like five years old, people would pay him to draw their house and he'd never even been there. He could draw it. It's just, a, just it's, they're just giftings, giftings of things, giftings of things. And, and so, I was only for us going with all this. <clears throat> and, and so his gifts are without repentance, resting on your life, all right? So, so he speaks in the, scar, the star, sky, 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 stars, there you go. He speaks in those things. They're following the stars for, for, for a period of like two years, by the way. And they get to Jesus and they're carrying three gifts. That's why we thought there were three wise men because they had gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And we thought, well, there must be three of them. No, no, no. There is an entourage because they're not stupid. They're wise men. Wisdom always brings a gift to the king. Well, I preach that 100 ways a Sunday right now. But uh, uh, wisdom always brings a gift to the king. In fact, I can in the old time, if you didn't bring a gift to the king, you could actually be put to death. I'll leave, I'll leave you alone. Um, wisdom always brings a gift and it was something of extravagance and it was treasure chest the size of coffins with gold, frankincense, and myrrh, which were extremely valuable. Gold, obviously valuable, but I don't think we understand the value of frankincense and myrrh so much that a person could break over an alabaster box and they said, this is a year's wages. There's treasure chest filled with this type of spices and oils. What would, uh, the, the jar of oil, what would, uh, oh, said, hey, they're coming. The collectors are coming. What do you want me to do, Elisha? What do you got? Nothing except a jar of oil. I want you to go in there. We're going to multiply that. Then she goes, I did that. What do you want me to do? Go to the marketplace, sell it, and you sell it all. You and your sons will pay off the debts and you'll live on the rest you as an inheritance. It's extremely valuable stuff. And so Jesus might have been born into obscurity, but he became extremely wealthy at an extremely early point in his life. And they brought these things in. They would not have been three wise men carrying around this because you have seen the Western movies and people get robbed, right? Or you've turned on Twitter and saw Chicago and see that people get robbed. I don't even know how they got robbed. I'm pretty sure there was gun-free zone stickers everywhere. So I don't know how anybody got robbed. Because the gun, I don't even know how those guns fire with the sticker, just like it causes the guns to not work. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> problems in the pattern. Problems in the pattern. Uh, and so, so, so we, 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 we see these, and it always, it always messes with me on that when people, when people do that. Like, just like gun free zone, like it did, it didn't, it, there was no COVID free zone stickers. Like, it should have worked just as well. I mean, it did work. You had to wear a mask when you walked in the restaurant, but COVID would not come to your table because you could take it off when it's there. So it just like, it, it was very selective. 
God didn't send COVID, by the way. Why? Because he's not, he's not into giving viruses to people. And if he was, then why was he so hacked off at old people? Yeah, well, I don't, it's whatever. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, whatever. Anyways, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go, I gotta go. I gotta go. Um, <clears throat> anyways, anyways, they would have traveled with this huge entourage. Why? Because they had extremely expensive and valuable stuff. And they're wise men. If, they're, if wisdom is on them, then they, then they know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to travel with, with protection as well. Okay? So Jesus isn't, Jesus isn't homeless. He's not poor. What, how do you know? Listen, let me help you. Let me help you. Well, the Son of Man had nowhere to lay his head. He's talking about governments, guys. Foxes have holes. This is not what I was preaching about, but, but Dad got me up going to. Um, foxes have holes. He said this to Herod. You go tell that sly fox. He's talking about a, a Herod. Foxes have holes. Birds have nests, which is a representation of the Roman government. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. He, I mean, he's like, no, listen, listen. Come on. He had a pillow. Probably a my pillow, but he had one. He had a pillow, man. Come on, the guy, the guy that bursts the dream of my pillow from heaven. I just need you to know he didn't. He, he's not running around without a pillow. That's not what he's talking about. The, 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 the government, he has nowhere to lay his head because they were expecting him to even up, up and up until some of the final moments of his life. They thought he was fixing to set up an earthly throne to overthrow the Roman government. Herods have holes. They have a place to rule from. And birds have nests. They have a place to rule from. But the Son of Man's got nowhere here to lay his head. He's talking about governments. There's a government on him that has no end, but it's not of the pattern of this world. It is of a pattern of heaven. I need you to see that. I need you to see that. Why? Because you are in the world, but you're not of the world. That's a big deal. If you go read the prayer of Jesus, which is the Lord's prayer, not Matthew 6, it's not the Lord's prayer, it's the Cyprus's prayer, but John 17 is the Lord's prayer. And in the Lord's prayer of John 17, he says of you and I that they're not any more part of the world than I am. What? He says in John, in John chapter, in John chapter, what is it, three, and he's having a conversation with Nicodemus in the night, and he said, you must be born again. The word born again means to be born from above, from another dimension. If you're born again, you are not of the world. You are in the world, but you are of heaven. You are now a diplomatic, you are, you are a walking diplomat, citizen of heaven, and diplomats have the authorization to speak on behalf of where they are from, which may be both frightening and empowering at the same time, because when you open up your mouth, the heavens are listening, and they're responding to your words that you're releasing into the atmosphere. And so when you begin to release an echoes, where we get the English word echo, because you're hearing a sound from heaven and you're releasing that out of partnership in the earth, you're releasing on earth as it is in heaven. This happened in Acts chapter two. They heard a sound. It's the Greek word echoes. There's an echoes from heaven. All right, keep tracking with me. Keep tracking with me. We're going to run. We're going to run together. So, so th 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 this is... All this, bring, the, bring this into, into culmination. The problem is in the pattern. But if you are conformed to the patterns of this world, then you're going to miss the power of the invisible realm. But if you'll renew your mind, it's within your reach and it's within your grasp. And just change the way that you think. It's a big deal. Why is it a big deal? How many people in your life did you see try to do better? And they did better for three months because they tried to do better. They tried to do better, and they did better for just a little while. 
uh, you're not, you, may, you might not be picking this up. Let me help you right now. People that are in prison, if Jesus doesn't change the way they think, they oftentimes go back to prison. They're sitting in the cell right now plotting about what business that they're going to do that's illegal when they get out. But when Jesus changes the way they think, they're rescued from, 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 that, from that prison and there's something that shifts within their life and they never go back. How, prison did not work for people that didn't go back. Prison's not working, by the way. Look at the percentage of the ones that go back. Why? Because punishment will never cause you to change your behavior. Kindness will. What? Kindness. His kindness leads people into repentance. So when I begin to be kind to people out of the love of God, it begins to shift how they think. It begins to shift how they think. Now I'm not, listen, this isn't an excuse for you to coddle your demon. God. (laughs) Some things you've been trying to shout at that you're going to have to cast out and say that I'm done with this weed growing in my life. And because I'm done with that, I'm shifting how I think because I'm tired of the merry-go-round that this seed is producing in me. So I'm going to stop partnering with that seed and I'm going to eat a different harvest. I'm going to eat a different harvest. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. 1 Samuel 15. Oh, I got to hurry. And Samuel said to Saul, the Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people Israel. Now therefore listen to the words of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I have noted what Amalek did to Israel in opposing them on the way when they came up out of Egypt. Now go and strike Amalek and devote to destruction all that they have. Do not spare them, but kill both man and woman, child and infant, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. So Saul summoned the people and numbered them, two hundred numbered them in Telaim, two hundred thousand men on foot and ten thousand men of Judah. And Saul came to the city of Amalek and lay it in wait in the valley. And Saul said to the Kenites, Depart, go down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For you showed kindness to all the people of Israel when they came out of Egypt. So the Kenites departed uh, from among the Amalekites. And Saul defeated the Amalekites from Havilah as far as Shur, which is east of Egypt. And he took Agog, Agag, I don't know, Agog, Agag, He took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive and devoted to destruction all the people with the edge of the sword. He was supposed to take everybody out, but he saves the king of the Amalekites, Agag, the seed, the weed that was supposed to be uprooted was not uprooted. And he spared him. And the best of the sheep and the oxen and the fatted calves and the lambs and all that was good. So there's probably more than just the king here that's getting spared, but there's probably some women getting spared. There's probably some other things that are getting spared. The word of the Lord came to Samuel, I regret that I made Saul king for he has turned back from following me and has not performed my commandments. And Samuel was angry and he cried to the Lord all night. Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning. And it was told Samuel, Saul came out to Carmel. And behold, he set up a monument for himself and turned and passed on and went down to Gilgal. I'm going to progress through here for time's sake. And he said, what are you doing, man? He said, oh, I did what the Lord wanted us to do. He said, what? what? And, and Samuel says, then why do I hear all these bleeding sheep? Bleating with a T. Why do I hear the, and I, I like to think that he, he sounded just like Braveheart when he said that. I, if it doesn't in your mind, it should. Because just in the perfect accent, the bleating sheep. What's it like? What, what do I hear? What is this that I hear with the sound of these sheep? I spared them as a sacrifice to the Lord. Samuel says, obedience is better than sacrifice. You've not been obedient in the name of sacrifice and what you thought was a better idea. You have lost your humility, Saul, where you thought your ideas were better than God's. 
and you spared the king of Agag, Agog. Samuel then takes out a, he, he cuts him into pieces. So it, this isn't in your nursery wall, but it, it's there. It's in the stories. He cuts him into pieces and, 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 and wipes him out. Saul was willing to spare the seed that was a weed and it was a problem. Let's save the best of this. Well, here's a problem. How do you know that? Because the king died that day by the, by the hand of the prophet. He died that day by the hand of the prophet. But then when we get over to Esther, we find that Haman was what? I'm, I'm going to read that to you because you just, in case somebody didn't want to believe me. I'll just read it to you. Let's go over there, Esther. Where is he at? Let's do it this way. Man, I'm going to have to read so much if I do that. Okay. Let's do it this way. Chapter 3, verse 1. After these things, King Ahasuerus promoted Haman the Agagite. What? These guys aren't supposed to even exist. Why? Because God said, take them all out. Take them all. Don't save sheep. Don't save livestock. Don't save anything from the seed of, of, of the Amalekites. And now we have descendants of the Amalekites, Haman, the Agagite, who is planning a holocaust of the Jewish people. And God has Esther in place. The thing that you thought was a better idea is a bigger deal than you think. It's important that you not partner with any weed in your life that you identify as a weed because it's trying to choke out the plan of God in your life. This is Mark chapter number four, the parable of, 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 the parable of, of, of seeds, the sower, the parable of the sower. There's some that fell on thorny ground, product of another seed. It's trying to choke out the words of God. You have to understand that anytime I'm partnering with the underbrush and the thorn and the wheat or the tares and the, and the weeds in life, it's trying to choke out the things that God is saying over my life. I cannot partner with that. It is a big deal because it's trying to lead to my destruction at a later moment. But God in his grace has said, you need to uproot that. Uproot that. Give it to me and I'll uproot it. You're not going to swing and miss. He's already finished all this stuff. You're not, you don't have to live with your issue not one more day. You don't, well, is the Spirit of the Lord here today? Okay, then what's the scripture say? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. So you don't have to leave here, when you can leave here with zero bondage. Because the Spirit of the Lord is here in power and freedom. The weapons of our God are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. You don't have to leave here with a stronghold. You don't have to leave here with the issue. And if you're not careful to see your issue as God's glory and opportunity, then your issue has the ability to become your identity because you, power, you empower the deception and the lie that this is who you are. And that's a big problem because that issue is not who you are. You are God's son. You're God's daughter. That's who you are. So I cannot partner with any other weeds that are telling me a different story. I cannot, do, come on, I need to take, take captive every thought that would exalt itself against the thoughts of God. I can't allow this weed to grow in my mind anymore. I cannot allow the mockery in the back of my mind because if you're not careful, the Ishmael of your mind will always end up mocking the Isaacs in your heart. So you better send Ishmael on his way and say that I'm not here with the bondwoman and the bondson of slavery when I've got the word of promise on the inside of me. I'm gonna partner with a different story. I'm done letting the weeds grow in my mind. Well, Adam, when he was created, he had the job of tending the garden. 
you too are tending the garden of your mind. What seeds are you allowing to grow? They determine the future you're going to experience. So I need to partner with a different seed. The awesome thing and beautiful thing about Esther, listen, we celebrate Samson because he picked up the jawbone of a donkey and killed a thousand. And we don't celebrate Esther near as much. One of the greatest warriors to ever live was Queen Esther, and she never picked up the sword. She warred through intimacy with the king. Come on. Samson picked up a jawbone. Picked up a jawbone. But Esther just had the whisper. She had the ear of the king. And her whisper prevented a holocaust. She stopped a war because of her position with the king. I, I, I I need to run a little while. She stopped the war because of her position with the king. And she said, come on. He, she's like, he's not even summoning me these 30 days because Mordecai came to her who, who was her adopted, her, her, it was her uncle because she was an orphan. Oh, his story just gets better and better. She's an orphan and her uncle takes her in as a, as a, as a uh, one, one said, hey, you're going to come live with me and, and, and you're going to be a part of this. And now Vashti's not doing what she's supposed to do. She, the king summoned her and she chose to stay at the feast instead of coming. And he said, hey, if we, don't, if we, if we allow this then there's going to be no respect, he said, we can't do this. And they, and they kicked her out and said, you're no longer king. You're no longer going to be queen. And said, now we need to find another queen. So bring all, bring all all the fine virgins, you know, that bring, bring the ones that look good, whatever. This is, you know, this is the Bible. This is, you know, at first attraction is completely physical. And, and so um, anyways, it's like, bring, bring them all here. Bring them all here. And she had a beautiful figure is what the scripture says. She's pretty to look at. And, and, and she found favor. She found favor there. And all, all of this stuff has happened. She's an orphan. And Mordecai said, you got to get up here. Something's about to shift. There's something that's happening here. And she finds favor in the crown rest on her head and she becomes the queen in this moment and now Haman is plotting a holocaust and Mordecai after a few years of his reign he said Mordecai said you got to go before the king she said he's not summoned me these 30 days I don't know what that king was thinking but he's like I haven't summoned me these 30 days and he's like listen you got to go anyway you got to go anyway. She's like, well, the penalty is death if he, if he doesn't release the scepter to me. And he said, he said, Esther, if you don't do this, why do you think you're going to escape the wrath coming to the Jewish people? But if you don't, relief and deliverance will arise from another place. But who knows whether or not you've been born for such a time as this. An orphan seed is getting the identity called out in her because she had a spiritual father. Spiritual fathers, spiritual fathers are, 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 are of utmost importance. Hopefully your biological father can be your spiritual father, but if your biological father can't be your spiritual father, the Lord will provide you a spiritual father. Walk in lockstep with spiritual fathers and let them speak to the identity on the inside of you. And he starts calling forth the identity of this orphan seed that is Esther and says, you were born for this day. Come on, that's heavy words for an orphan. You were born for this day. You're born for this day. And her nearness to the king was able to prevent disaster from coming. Come on. The entire New Testament is not is not about sanctification by faith. It's about it's about the grace to be adopted. The grace to be adopted. Stop running around like you're an orphan seed. When you have a good father in heaven who's calling out the identity in you and saying that issue and those weeds don't belong to you. If you'll give them to me, you'll never see them again. Come on. He's calling out to you, saying, I'm providing freedom for you, 
and I'm bringing adoption to your life. All you you used to be you used to be an orphan seed, but you're not anymore because the perfect work of the cross. And I'm enfolding you into the family of God. Why? Because unless a grain of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it goes into the ground, if a seed goes into the ground, it will produce many. So Christ was the firstborn among many brethren. If the devil had known, he should have left well enough alone. Are you with me? He would have never messed with Jesus. Never messed with Jesus. Why? Because Jesus was the seed that produced the harvest. And there's only one son of God when Jesus is there. But now there's millions of sons of God. So he better come and confuse us in identity crisis so that we don't step into the manifestation of who we already are because the whole cosmos is groaning for it. And if we ever recognize the seed in us, our appetites will shift like a woman in pregnancy. I'm carrying something. Come on, man. let, let, Let a chain smoker get pregnant. Even I'm not saying they always do, but I'm saying you'll see people that smoked stop smoking when they're pregnant. They drink. Come on, this is like this. Some of these people aren't even believers, but they know that they're carrying something that their appetite has to change to host what's on the inside of them. If you ever recognize the seed on the inside of you, you'll begin to shift your appetite and say, I'm done eating this and I'm done eating that, but now I can taste and see that the Lord is good and he's put something of his goodness on the inside of me. I'm going to feast from his table and from the heavenly realities that are my my access. Okay, I got to go to point number two. Man, Operate like I, I can't. I can't. I gotta. I'm gonna quit. I'm gonna quit. My wife says our minds can only take so much. So I'm gonna prophesy that longer, longer minds take more. Father, bring us longer sermons. Yeah, I want to tell you. I want to tell you. Want to tell you. Want to tell you about the Zion realm that's right now. I feel like there's a shifting that is happening. I, it's, sometimes it's hard for, because I've never ministered at this point internationally. But, but in, in America, I feel like that there's a major dynamic shift that's happening. You, you know, in, in, uh, and I'm, I, am, I really am quitting. there's a major shift that I feel like that is happening and I feel like that we're in a moment where when when governments haven't aligned there's a people of intimacy with nearness to the king you guys know the story of Esther Holocaust was prevented he hated despised Mordecai and Mordecai, I end up wearing the ring that was on Haman's finger and the gallows that Haman had built 50 feet high in his yard. He hung on his own gallows. He was hung on his own gallows. There's coming such an exposing of the enemy's plan that God is shifting some things to what they meant for evil is going to be turned back on them. And I'm seeing that I'm seeing this. I'm seeing as as this happened in the days of Esther. I'm seeing there's an anointing now for people of nearness to begin to whisper to the to the inclined ear of their heavenly Father, and some things are shifting in the earth. I feel like in an accelerated manner, in an accelerated manner, where people that were plotting plans are about to eat their own fruit. I don't know when it's all going to look. I don't know. Uh, here, I'll go, let me let me encourage you this so that you don't think I'm, you know, a false prophet in 3 3 months. 
if that didn't happen. Jesus has been quickly coming for 2,000 years. Okay? So, Salah. Um, the plans of heaven here. I'm saying in, in, in January of 2020, God didn't start speaking to me about, he didn't tell me anything about pandemics. I'm not telling you he didn't tell anybody about them. I'm saying he didn't tell me about pandemics. He started speaking to me about this guy playing in the NBA named Zion Williamson. I'm, I'm not a, you know, definitely not a Pelicans fan. I don't know why anybody would be. But <laughs> Zion Williamson he played for Duke, strike two. Um, and, but he played, he played, he played a year for, played a year for Duke. Amazing, amazing talent. One of the most hyped drive, draft picks since LeBron James was Zion Williamson. Zion Williamson came drafted and came into the league with it. He was drafted and drafted and came into the league with it. He was drafted in, 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 in summer of 29, in the year of 2019, even though the season started in October, he was, he had the, he had the injury. If you, if you guys remember, he had the injury and he actually didn't start playing until January of 2020. And that rookie made his debut in January of 2020. And the father began to speak to me about his name. And he said, break it all down. And I said, wait, just, and he started speaking to me this language and he said, Zion Williamson. And I started looking at Zion, the will of I am son. Spell it out right here. I Look, I don't know if he's going to, maybe he's going to be, if he stays out of injuries, he will be a hall of famer. But whatever happens to Zion's career, He's more than just an NBA player to me. He is an announcement. He is an announcement. I don't even know where that guy's faith is, but I'll tell you this. He came as an announcement to a shifting in dimensions. I mean, it would, I mean, nobody came into the league named Pandemic or, you know, Wuhan flu or anything like that or whatever. Um, nobody came in the league named that, but somebody came in the league and they made their debut in January of 2020. Zion, the will of the I am son. And it started igniting something on the inside of me. Start, David wrote about it a lot. Zion is mentioned over a hundred times in the scripture. Out of the hundred, over a hundred times that it's mentioned in the scripture, around 90 of those times come from David and Isaiah. It's amazing. I don't, I don't have time. I don't have time to go down that road. But I'm saying he was telling me about this shift, and I'm seeing this shift of, of people of Zion, people of Zion that are awakening to the degree in this moment where there's nearness to the king that is preventing things in the earth, and it's also releasing things in the earth. Don't prescribe, to, listen, don't prescribe to the, to the dose of fear. Let me help you. Let me help you. Recession is, is less something that actually happens to you and more an idea that you partnered with. <laughs> I'm going to mess with somebody. Well, recession, well, that's what, this is what the economy is doing. Why? Because that's what they said. Stop partnering with that. Recession, listen, are, are, you, are you American government or are you kingdom government? Well, I'm in America. You're not subject to American government. You're subject to kingdom. So you operate like where you're from and not what you're... Are you with me? What I'm of and what I'm in is not the same thing. The pattern of the world brings conformity that will always lead to death because it's natural. And the natural mind is always walking me to death, but the supernatural mind is always walking me to life. And if I'll shift the pattern of how I think, I'll see what I've not seen. Change the pattern of how you think. Seeing a shifting here where things are going to be turned on people and, 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 and the exposing God's going to expose some things in such a way in, in, the coming, in the coming days. I don't know what it's all going to look like, but I just feel like the Lord is like, he's, there's just a spirit of Esther. There's a spirit of Esther that says that I was born for this day and nearness to the king is about to release something in the earth. Nearness to the king is about to, and it came from somebody that came out of an orphan seed. An orphan seed 
This is you and I, friend. Once we were orphans, but now we are sons and daughters. So we can't run around thinking like orphans anymore. We belong to him. We are his, and he is ours. I got to stand with me. I got to quit. I can't talk about Zion anymore right now. It's the will of the I am son, and it is for now. I was going to read Hebrews 12, and it tells you it's now. There's several in Psalms, several in Isaiah. It's now. It was, a, it, was a, it was a literal place in the day of David and a spiritual place in the day of David. And he wove in and out of that, that thinking. In and out of that thinking. And, and Hebrews 12 said, we've already come to the spiritual mountain that is Zion. We have access. We have access to a multidimensional God. You're not subject to everything in the earth, guys. Stop operating by like like we, we are so reactionary. I see a storm and knee-jerk reaction is to start doing this, this, and this because there's a storm. No, no, no. Don't react. Respond. You do know that they don't call them first reactors, don't you? Because reaction has already happened that called them on the phone to get the responders there because responders are highly trained to deal with what you've been reacting about. So when I break out of the reactionary thinking of what I just heard on the news and what I just seen in the bank account and what just the, the thing that I just heard and I'm not gonna react to that, but how do I respond to that? Prayer and worship is how I fight my battles and when I begin to do this, it will bring strength to my paralyzed weak knees. Just Galatians 5 for you, I guess. Or is that Romans? It's in there, go look it up. Prayer and worship. This is how I respond. Peace be still moments. I'm not going to react to the pattern of the world I'm in. I'm going to respond to the world I'm from, with the world I'm from. You're not subject. This is Psalm 1, never withering leaf. You're not subject to the seasons of the earth. So long as the earth remains, spring, summer, fall, winter, it's going to happen. It's going to ha- guess what? Fall's going to happen this year, guys. I don't even have to convince you of it. It's going to happen. Why? Cuz it's the pattern. But you're in the world not of it. Where you're of, trees bear fruit 12 months of the year. So stop convincing yourself that cuz it says winter on the calendar, there's nothing that can grow in my life. Calendar, there's nothing that God's growing something. He's cultivating something. He's incubating something. Get ready for just a a dynamic. We're going to see such a shift, I feel like, in kingdom business where there's going to be such a distinction to why is this business so prosperous and it'll be traced back to the kingdom. Traced back to the kingdom. There'll be a kingdom business. Come on. There'll be two people that buy into the same franchise. One will be kingdom and one won't. One will succeed and the other won't. Ah. They bought in the same franchise. Well, they must have been in a better location. No, 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 stop that crap. They were thinking differently and heaven was prospering them. Heaven was prospering them. Father, I thank you, God, for this amazing group of people that you trusted us with. Lord, and and maybe they've never sat in a sermon this long. So I just, Lord, I thank you for bringing people that can sit long enough to receive a seed. And I just prophesy over the greenhouses of their life. And I say, this garden's gonna grow. This garden's gonna grow. Father, we just partner with them. And we thank you, God, for angels that have already went ahead of them to make the journey a success. I give you glory, God, because people are going to be healed. People are being set free. 
people are getting breakthrough. God, these words, God, are not just my words, but the words that they're hearing from the Father are life and peace to them. Lord, let them latch on to them, God, and say that this belongs to me, and this is from the Father, and this is what he was saying to me today, God. Lord, even if they even if they didn't get everything that was said, Father, let them latch on to the things that you were saying to them to the things you are saying to them. God, even tomorrow, like this wellspring of wisdom just bubbling over on the inside as Holy Spirit just draws to the forefront the things that they were hearing that they could partner with and apply, God, to the situations they're in. Father, I thank you for doing it. I give you glory for it. Father, if they're here and they're needing healing in their body, I just speak and release healing in the atmosphere. It's already been spoken and released in the atmosphere before we speak it and we decree it again, God, and we say, Lord, let it come down like rain. God, let it come down like rain on them. Father, I thank you for healing. God, I thank you for stronger marriages. I thank you for stronger family units. I thank you, God, for a stronger people that are increasing, God, not because they didn't recognize their weakness, but they said, Father, where I'm weak, you are strong, and they begin to partner with your strength. Lord, I thank you for the joy of the Lord invading them. The joy of the Lord will be their strength. Not the weariness of their schedule, but the joy of the Lord will be their strength to overcome everything scheduled. Father, I thank you for that. I speak blessings on them. I speak blessings on them. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, guys, thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for hanging out with Kingdom Culture and being a part. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for your support and and, and all that you're doing, your encouraging words and, and all that the Father's doing. Please continue to text us, call us, message us. Let us know when God's doing that. God's whatever amazing thing He's He's done in this service and last service, whatever it is, we want to celebrate those things with you. And so we we thank you for sharing those stories with with us. Awesome things, awesome things coming. You can scan the barcodes in front of you and and get more information on, on how to contact us and 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 things like that. And and so uh, we we bless you. We'll see you.